What is going on everybody? It is David Palmer, Leo King. We are live now with Deep Astrology. I know I haven't been around for a little bit. Literally was stuck. How is this Mercury retrograde energy happening for you? We're going to talk about that today. There's a lot to talk about here on Deep Astrology. If you've never been on this show before, we're taking astrology deeper than it's ever been before. We're going to analyze some charts. We're going to go deep. We're going to look at this week and see what is going on. There is a lot of things that have been going on, especially through the weekend, and how did that energy kind of tumble itself into this week? We are doing this show. It is Wednesday. I don't even know what day it is. It is the 4th of April of 2018. We are so close from Chiron moving out of Pisces, moving into Aries. It's been about 50 years, right, since this transition happened. We are right at the brink of Saturn retrograde, Pluto retrograde. So we're in a really weird kind of space right now. We're also getting ready for the uh, new moon in Aries, which will be coming later, uh, halfway through this month. And um, so we're kind of in a weird spot. I'll just be very blunt about that, okay? Um, I wished I could say that there was a ton of astrology happening in this next week. And I'm actually doing this from the 4th of April until Monday. Um, so it really is not gonna be covering like a whole week until I come back next Tuesday, because I always do deep astrology on Tuesday nights. But to be honest with you, I don't want to call this a break because still there is a lot of intense stuff going on. But really, some of the biggest intense stuff has happened and I think we're processing what to do with it. The universe has revealed its big guns. The universe has revealed its big energy. The universe has revealed a lot of stuff to us. And it's like, what do we do with it? Is really what I believe where we're at right now not only in the astrology, but just in all of our lives. And I think we have to look at Chiron at this 29th degree. It's a weird, funky spot, you know? It's really about choices we've made in our life. Are they right? Are they wrong? What do we want to let go? Remember that the 29th degree of Pisces is the last degree in the zodiac. It really is where we ponder, did we do things right or not? I hate to use the term on our deathbed, but you know, when we're on our deathbed in life, we kind of ponder and we look back at our whole life and we go, was that the right choice I made? Should I have done this? Do I regret anything? What are those things? And Chiron at the 29th degree can be a spot where we pull up a bunch of the stuff that maybe we regret. We pull up a bunch of the stuff that maybe we really want out of our life and we feel, you know, weird about it. But we also know Chiron is getting ready to come into Aries where it springs up and it springs forward and it comes into a better zone where it really starts to channel this new world, this new life. So I want to say that, yes, uh, like I said earlier, it's not like there's a lot of crazy transits happening. I'm going to show you in the chart that there is some stuff going on, some good stuff, actually, to be honest with you all. There's some good stuff coming here this week. But that some of the biggest stuff has just happened. And what are we gonna do to process with that? And you've gotta look at that Chiron 29 degree Pisces. Very odd degree, very weird space for Chiron to be. Also, you know, when you look at Chiron itself, it is an energy that is already funky donkey and off and off-putting. And the 29th degree of Pisces can be this very miracle spiritual degree, but at the same time, it can be very at the end of your rope. And so it's interesting that Chiron deals with a lot of that energy as itself. If I were to pick a degree and a sign to represent what Chiron is already, I would already pick out of all the 360 degrees in the zodiac, I would already pick 29 degree Pisces. If I had to pick one space that represented the energy of Chiron, I would literally go, ah, oh, 29 Pisces. It just so happens to be here now, literally. So it's kind of like, wow, it's actually at that spot. So, you know, it's gonna bring up things in your life right now. It's like, did I, is this really what I want in my life? Because Chiron knows it's about to come into Aries, where the sun is right now, where Mercury is retrograding. So you gotta remember that there's a lot about, are we on the right identity? Am I who I really wanna be? Is this what I really want in my life? Venus and Taurus. We're gonna talk about this Venus-Taurus aspect because it's kind of like, Slipping through the cracks, right? Because there's been so much with Mars and Saturn. There's been so much with this Mercury retrograde. Let's not forget good old Venus is in Taurus in its home sign. And Venus is going to show, 
you know, her true power this week. Um, and we're going to show that with the trines to Mars, the trines to Saturn, which comes next week. But there's a lot of that stuff coming. And we also got some good energy with some fire that we're going to talk about. But there's a lot of good things. And when I really, you know, want to process everything that's been going down astrologically, it is tough. It's tough to deal with a better life. It's tough for us to say we are going to rise to another level in our life. I don't know why, but that's just the weird part about where we're at right now in the world, in the astrology, and everything. Yes, it can feel like there are very tough external forces in the world that we are dealing with. But the real truth is that the hardest part inside of us is raising our vibration to a higher level right now. The universe is setting the bar higher. That's what Mars conjunct Saturn is in Capricorn with Pluto there. The bar has risen higher than it's ever been in all of our lives as humanity and existence and everything. So that's why people are so upset with the news. That's why people are upset with other people in their lives. That's why people are upset with things that they haven't reached and where they want to be in their life. The universe is setting the bar fucking high, okay? It's fucking high. And all of us are trying to reach that bar. And I think it's very difficult because it's not an easy bar to reach. The, the, the universe is throwing a very high bar. And that could be hard on us. Now, I believe that we all want it. So it's not like uh, it's an issue of not wanting to get to that bar. Because the truth is, is even though the bar is really high, the truth is, is we all want to reach there. But how we get there is I think what we're going to have to make some big decisions on this week. I mean, I'm literally doing this show with Mercury retrograde square Saturn. So why don't we look into the charts, see what's going on right there. I could always use a nice seat, talk about some astrology, look at some charts, let's take a look, let's see what's inside. <laughs> Uh, so I'm doing today's chart for April the 4th of 2018. Oh, gosh. And um, I, I just ran it. I don't even know what time it is right now. It's 2 like 6 p.m. Pacific, but I ran this about 30 minutes ago, okay? Now, if we look at the astrology of today, one, the big news, Mercury, right? Mercury and the sun have already had their conjunction, so Mercury is going behind the sun. Not literally, but in our view from Earth. What's interesting though is look at this. Saturn has reached the ninth degree today. Now why is this a big deal? This is exactly the stationary position in which Saturn will retrograde. And Saturn's retrograding in, well, what's today? The fourth? So in about a little less than two weeks. So Mercury exactly square Saturn. What does that mean? Well, Mercury square Saturn, especially in a retrograde, and especially as Saturn is at its strongest position, is you have to think of it like this, okay? Mercury retrograde already is trying to remember, uncover, retool, rethink different aspects of ourself and who we are, especially in Aries. But when it comes into a deep square with Saturn, it's frustration, it's delays. But it's Saturn in Capricorn. It's major decisions that are going to last a long time in our life that are dealing with our path, our destiny, our journey. And these are big choices that are coming up that we're rethinking. Is this what we should have done? And a lot of it, I think, is the mixture of Chiron at that 29th degree in Pisces, which could be like, like I brought up earlier, like, uh, are we regretting things? Or was, is this really what we want in our life? Are we spiritually satisfied? Do we feel spiritually cleansed? Or do we feel something's off? You know, we are rounding, you know, you got to look at the Zodiac as like a race car track. And the last, the, the finish line is 29 Pisces. So for the fact that Chiron has finished its whole entire 50 year journey around the Zodiac, there's a lot when it comes to our healing and our, you know, whether we feel like we're getting shafted or not, like in our life. And when you combine this with a Mercury retrograde square Saturn transit, we're, we're at this like, okay, I'm about to make major choices in my life about who I am, redirecting it. Am I going to choose a new race car? Am I going to choose a new car? Am I going to change the paint color? I mean, what's going on here? 
And I think a lot of it with Saturn and Capricorn is like, maybe the plans need to change. Maybe they need to be looked at differently. Maybe they need to be retooled, rethought out, relooked at. Also Mercury retrograde and Saturn squares, even though yes, they can be negative with delays or, you know, stopping of energy. But I think that it's important for us to take a look at things from a lot of angles and stop for a second so we can make sure that we're making the right choices in our life. Because Mercury tends to want to, especially in retrograde, be unsure of if we made the right choice or not right now. And with Saturn there, it's like saying, whoa, all right, before you start running around making crazy decisions, like, 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 let's consult for a second. Let's see where's your path going. So I bet you there's a lot of issues that are coming up in your life right now that are just going to take time. Whether you want to move, whatever, maybe you're wanting to change jobs, maybe your relationship is going through something. There's a lot of things in life right now that are coming up that are making you go, okay, I want it to change a lot, but that doesn't mean I'm just going to just jump into it. Remember, Mercury, and let's look at this chart, you know, it's crazy because remember that we still have Mars and Saturn in conjunction, even though Mars is coming off that conjunction now. Let's actually move that off. But you know, it's like when you get these two together and they're both squaring that Mercury retrograde, there's the, uh, the aspect to want to jump into big decisions, right? Because Mars is kind of adding steroids to Saturn and Saturn loves to make the choices and loves to make decisions. So for, for and I'll be very honest with you all, like when you think about this transit, uh, just Saturn and Mars conjunct as it is, it, it forces people who have difficult time making decisions really hard and then people who love making big choices and decisions, it makes them almost kind of jump into it more intense and maybe not think it all the way through and stuff. So it's kind of a weird aspect because the universe is really asking for us to A, make big choices, but B, do it at the same time while really thinking things through and taking our time to think things through. And there's a lot to try and understand. The sun is in Aries, it's exalted. And with Saturn and Capricorn and it's home sign, Mars exalted in Capricorn. There's a lot of planets and with Venus and Taurus, and this is what we're going to kind of bring up to here in a second, that there's a lot of energy right now in positive and good spaces. And what this means is, even though they might be in hard aspects, these are great times in our life to make change. These are great times in our life to get and capture what we really want. But it's whether you have the risk slash the guts to do it. Capricorn's risk. There is no cancer, right, in Capricorn where there's safety and security. Capricorn's risk. And when you got Mars, Pluto, Saturn, all in these signs, and, and you gotta remember both Pluto and Saturn are gonna go retrograde in weeks time, in April. The planets are starting to go retrograde, folks. Start making the changes. I don't like to use the analogy of getting stuck, but Mars is getting ready to come retrograde on June 26th. And when Mars goes retrograde, there's really not a, you know, it's a very difficult time to, sometimes you can feel really stuck. Depends on your chart, of course, and stuff, but, you know, it's like, this, Mars is already in the sign in which it will come back and go retrograde in. There, and it's not at the shadow period yet, but we are at a space to where it's like, you, you know the risk is there, you know that the guts are there that need to be done, the reward is there for taking the guts and the risk to speak up, to say what you have to say. A lot of this with this Mercury retrograde square Mars and square Saturn is speaking up about very difficult and very hard issues. These are hard. This is not soft. This is not cancer stuff. If you have stuff in cancer that's being opposed by this, it's probably extremely difficult and emotional for you. The other thing is Pluto. Pluto's at the last degree. Pluto's stationary. Like, Mars is coming towards Pluto now, right? This is also interesting to me because P Mars is slowing down. Mars is slowing down because of this June 26th retrograde, which will happen at 9 degrees 
of Aquarius on June 26, okay? So Mars is not even going to go 30 degrees from now until June 26. Now, why is that important? Because Mars travels 40 days through a sign. What's today? April 4th? 40 days from now should be what? Like May 14th? Guess what? Mars will still not be that far away. So you got to realize that Mars is only going to go 29 more degrees and then go retrograde in 60 plus days. 60 plus days. That's not normal. That's not, do your math, do your astrology here. So Mars is slowing down. And it's in the sign of Capricorn where it's exalted. So these are about, you know, it's like, and when you get Mercury retrograding this, it's like, man, this is a big choice I got to make. But, you know, I know people want to rush into things, but it's like, you know, take your time with it. Take your time. It will all, you will get what you want at the end of it. Being stuck can really suck. I was stuck this weekend in a parking lot. Couldn't move. Trailer broke. Mercury retrograde stuff, you know, hitch broke, but you know what I mean? So it's like issues are going to come up that are going to be very difficult, but being patient and seeing them through is there. But the other thing that I want to bring up is this. We have now finally reached the halfway spot of Neptune. Neptune's at 15 degrees. So we are halfway through the Neptune transit. There's a lot of things going on in the background that I, I don't think people really might be really paying attention to. Like, these are big deals. Neptune reaching halfway through the home sign is a big deal because we're going to start to go into some really deep spiritual spaces. Not only that, this is going to unveil higher bars of sensitivities in your life that you're going to have to learn to deal with, you know, that you can't just suppress. There's a lot of suppression that could be starting to go on because the monumental aspects, if we look back at the chart, are mounting up. We've got the sun, of course, halfway through the sign of Aries today, and it's 15 more days, right? Or 15 more degrees until we get through um, there. And what's interesting is this is where the sun's exalted and Mercury's retrograding. So guts is what I like to call um, Aries. So you've got you know, the guts to make a move in life, You've got the risk that needs to be taken, that's a very hard risk, in order to find what? Because all of this at the end of the day is pointing towards Leo. This is where the North Node is, it's at 12 degrees, and how ironic that this 12 degree Leo aspect is an important aspect because this is about finding our true happiness and our true heart. This is what we're aiming for in our life. This is what the universe is trying to aim us towards. But there it is. Oh, the south node, 12 degrees. Now, why is this important? Remember I told you earlier that at 9 degrees is where, of Aquarius is where Mars will retrograde on the 26th? Well, during that time, that's where the south node's going to be. So this is definitely about deep ego issues, but more importantly, this is about the life and identity of who you want to be and the guts and the risk you're going to have to take to, to get there. And I just, it's going to play out two ways. And I'm looking really far forward right now, I know. I, I, I know I'm looking far forward. But I want to say that because there is so much coming up in the future, right now, and these aspects that are happening, you need to realize that this is a time in your life where if you want to make changes in who you are, what your surroundings are like, the person you are, you better get started on this stuff. You can't suppress it and go, I'm comfortable right now. I'm just going to deal with the comfort. Jupiter is in Scorpio. It ain't going to accept this shit no longer. It will not. It will not accept it. So you can't bullshit yourself no more. 
And with Mercury retrograde, with these hard squares, it's, it's going to bring up hard truths, hard conversations, hard facts, hard things to say, hard feelings to come out. This is Jupiter and Scorpio retrograde. Not easy stuff. And I think when I look at the fact that Mars is going to retrograde on top of the south node in about 60 plus days, and Mars is slowing down in the sign of exaltation, like this is a moment where even though Mars is slowing down, at least it's slowing down in a sign right now that it loves to be in. So it's like the guts and the glory and the risk I, you know, I hate to use astrology as like a way to gamble, but like gamble on risk and glory and reward. It will pay off. But everybody's trying to pay themselves off by this south node in Aquarius. No, I will keep the weird peace in a weird way and stay in a weird situation that I don't really fucking like anyway. Two. Neptune and Pisces. Oh, I'll suppress it. I'll just keep, you know what? I'll just keep drinking every day. No, I'll just keep taking that every day. I'll just keep smoking every day. I'll keep just doing this. I'll just repress it instead of dealing with it because I don't want to deal with it. Three. Chiron at the last degrees of, of Pisces. Oh man, it's going to hurt really bad letting that go. Four. <laughs> Everybody's expecting an answer, but I'm going to build that answer up. The sun's in Aries. What you really want, okay? Who you really are. If you are not that person, why is it so hard to rip the band-aid off something that you really don't want anyway? Trapped. I think it's interesting that we all are under places where we could feel extremely trapped. And you know what's crazy? Is it could be in, it's not just one space. Now I think that our identity and our egos like to go, yeah, I feel trapped in this one area of my life, big time, bam. But when you start to spread those tentacles around of your spiritual soul, you'll realize there's a lot of other places that you might feel trapped at right now in your life. Can I read that this last degree is no BS. Now let's move on to the chart of, uh, let's see, Saturday this weekend. So I'll be honest with you all. I think from uh, Thursday and Friday, I don't want to say they're chill, but it's pretty chill days. You should watch Future Life and watch the Daily Horoscopes. But here's the big deal. So on the 7th of this weekend... We've got Venus at 9 degrees in its home sign, and guess what it's about to do? It's going to trine the Saturn aspect, okay? And Mars aspect. So this is very good. Combine that with everything I just brought up, okay? Um, about be being trapped and whether or not you got the guts, you got the glory, you got the risks to go where you want to go. When you get Venus in Taurus, it, it is about that new demanding space in our life that we have to raise our self-worth to a higher place in order to, to feel good in our lives. The problem is with Saturn and Capricorn, it demands a higher bar. It demands a plan. It demands a path. And also Mars and Capricorn is exalted. These demand true self-worth, true higher bars in our life. We want better. And unfortunately, this isn't like, you know, give me the cheapest 87 octane gas. It's like, no, I want race fuel. It's like, it's like shopping at like some discount store, like, you know, Ross. No, that's not going to do it. I need a suit for my wedding. You know, it's like, this is not where you can just keep saying, I'm going to take the lesser of evils. It's like, I don't want any of the lesser. I want only the best. And I don't want evil. I want goodness. I want the best. I don't want things that I 
don't like. I want things that I fucking love. Why do you think Uranus is coming into Taurus in like literally a month? We're almost to the month mark. And you can start to feel it. And with Uranus, and let's look at the chart. Where is Uranus during all this, this weekend? Oh, it's almost at 28 degrees. What does that mean? Well, last year in 2017, Uranus went retro at 28. So we are so close to ending the shadow period of Uranus, of raising the bar higher of your guts. You can feel the universe priming it up. Priming you to reach higher, to have the guts to make bigger choices, to step up the bar in your life, to get more on track, and to have better. Now, there's ways to make things better in life. A, in the car, in the boat world, we call it refurbished. You know, we refurbish it, or we put new interior in the car, we, we refreshen it, we make it look better. Or two, you just buy a new car. <laughs> right? It's like, I'm over that car, trade it in. I don't want that. So there's a lot of things in our life now where it's like, what am I going to do? Am I going to fix this? You're honest in Aries. But if I fix it, will it ever really become what I want? Or do you follow the Leo thing? I'm just going to go get what I really want in my life. Especially with Venus now coming into square, because this is what I'm going to show you all. This weekend, what I think is really interesting is Venus is going to square this north and south nodes while the moon's tapping it. Okay, and this is on Monday. So we have this interesting T-square forming to Venus in the nodes. So this is meaning that next week, April 9th, through that week, through the 15th, when the new moon is and Mercury comes out of retrograde on the 15th, okay, this is what next week's show is going to be about. But I'm preparing you all that, look at this. You're about to make those choices of whether you're going to fix and repair, which because the moon's there, most people are probably going to choose to fix what they've got instead of go buy new. Because in Aries or Leo, we usually just say, oh, I don't want it anymore. I want, you know, kings, kings don't like refurbished goods, right? And queens, they would rather have you go out to some new country and buy it for them and bring it back, you know? But in Aquarius, Aquarius is handy and fixable and, oh, let's fix it. Let's, let's make it better. You know, and maybe you've got great things in your life that you can make better. And I think, you know, whichever direction you choose is up to you. I think a lot of people are going to choose to try and fix things this week. I, I, I got a feeling that's the energy that's coming about. But at the same token, you know, I think there's this thing in the back of all of our minds or the back of our souls. And especially if you look at this chart, look at what happens on Monday. Look at that, 27.59. That means we're coming to 28 degrees. We are almost to that, we are going to come to that shadow degree, you know, where we are going to move forward. So um, it's mounting up. Next week we're going to talk about the sun squaring Pluto. I mean, I mean, you are going to face heavy changes and big decisions in your life next week. And this weekend is the preparation for that. In all honesty, if I were to look at the charts and I were to look at everything, like, this is pretty... Everything's been laid down. Everything's been shown. And when everything is shown to you, I think it's extremely important to make sure that you realize these are, of course, big decisions. They're big things happening. And they're, they're, but you've got to choose that Venus and Taurus, that Saturn, that Mars and Capricorn. The planets are getting ready to go retrograde. The energy is going to start to slow down. And we're talking about major slowdowns. Mars, when it slows down, slows the masculine energy, slows the definition aspects, slows the identity process. Saturn's about to go retrograde. There's not much more we can, you know, raise in our life as far as climb. So it's like, fine. get going. These next two weeks, it's like, 
by the time the 15th hits with that new moon, with Mercury retrograde, and then what happens? Chiron goes direct on the 17th of April and Saturn retrogrades. And then Pluto follows that just in like, well, like four or five days into it and goes retrograde. So you've got 11 days <laughs> from today. Not a lot of time. You know, there are major things that are going to last a long time in your life, but you've got to confront them and deal with them and you can't bullshit yourself. There's way too many people in, in this world right now bullshitting themselves, lying to themselves. It's, it's okay, it's good. <laughs> I enjoy getting the shit. I enjoy having what I don't want. It's like, what are you fucking smoking? You must be smoking some really good shit to believe that it's okay to have crap in your life and not be fulfilled. The whole lesson of this whole entire last nine months, and actually you can go 10 or 11 because the North Node's at now 12 degrees. The whole lesson is to love what you have in your life and find true love in the hardest way you've ever had to find in your life, ever. Ever. No, none of us have ever dealt with North Node and Leo with Saturn and Capricorn and Mars conjunct with Pluto there and, and the crazy aspects that are going on here. None of us have. Like, to get to happiness is not going to be an easy trail. Now, Every guru out there is going to say, oh, happiness is just right in front of you right now. And you know what? It is. It is. They are right. But there's a place of eternal happiness. <laughs> eternal. That is what we all are feeling void from. And that void is the fear of taking the guts the ambition, the plan, and the main one, the risk to be authentic with our true feelings and let them out and go on that trail towards that hard trail, which is not going to be easy. It's going to be heavily emotional and you're not going to be able to let those emotions stay with you. You're going to have to push them aside and do the Capricorn thing and go into tough waters, but you know what? What do you think pirates or treasure hunters do when they get the reward? You're gonna be looked at as a pirate for going, like you're crazy, like you're going the wrong way, when really you're going towards the eternal happiness way. And you will be, you will be, people will look at you like you're crazy, like you're fucked up, like you're some crazy narcissist because, because the energy of Capricorn and Aries and Leo is energy that feels like a narcissist because it has, those are the three signs that have the guts to go. Those are the three signs that have the guts to say, fuck it, I'm doing what I really want. And then when you add Taurus in there, Taurus has the balls enough to be like, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I'm not going to Ross and I'm, I'm not going to wear that t-shirt. It's not nice enough to go to this fucking wedding. Sorry, I'm going on a date tonight. I, I don't think I'm going to take mom's car. You know what I mean? I'll rent a car. Like, we're dealing with energy that is not simple because it's, your own fears to take risks to get to eternal happiness. You would rather sit in shit and not bring it up and just smoke your weed, do your meds, drink, suppress it all and not deal with it. Neptune at the 15 degrees. No, I'm not gonna deal with it. Too much for me. That's just too much to be real. I don't know, I don't want, I don't know how to deal with my emotions because that's what everybody's going through right now is like nobody's unsure because when all this Capricorn is it's opposing cancer so it's like God if I really wanted to feel how I really want to feel I'm gonna have to do this really hard thing 
And actually, it's probably too harsh. It'll hurt people. It'll make people think I'm the devil. Because, of course, in Capricorn is where Mars, Saturn, and Pluto are. And what is Capricorn rule? The devil! So people are going to think that you're the devil, and then you yourself feel like you're the devil. Because it's such a harsh thing. The angels sit with Sirius over in Cancer. But on the other side in Capricorn, you're looked at as the devil because, you know, it looks like you're going against what is so beautiful or so great. Well, maybe at the very bottom of it, where you're looking under the house, there's just nothing but bugs and fucking shit there anyway. So you've got to be honest with yourself and be like, sorry, you have a beautiful house, but there's fucking termites underneath this bitch. And you got cockroaches everywhere, and they're fucking coming up through everything. And sorry, your pulpery spray and fucking everything isn't going to be able to bring all those fucking things down. You can't keep fucking smushing them and putting them under the co covers or putting them under the rugs. It's fucking rough out there. It's not rough out there because, you know, you're thinking it's hard or life's hard. No, it's hard because. You're not willing to fucking make the choice that you know is going to be tough. Your life is hard because you're not willing to raise the bar as high as the universe is raising it right now. You're fucking lazy to step up that high. You're too drained. You're too tired. You're too, there's too many things. There's too many hard things. When really, it's because you're repressing and suppressing your feelings about how you really feel and the life that you really want, and you're too afraid to be honest about it, and you're too afraid to deal with it. And once you finally do, you'll literally look up, you'll see the sky, you'll look at the sun, you'll smile, you'll wink at God, and that's that, literally that sunlight will shine back down on you. That's my deep astrology for this week. I don't know if y'all know I'm going on tour. I'm coming to a city near you in the next month and a half. Right when you're honest, going direct into uh, Taurus. So uh, check it out right now. Go to leokingevents.com. Oh, <laughs> leokingevents.com. Here I am. <laughs> Would love to see you in person. Remember, we're going to Denver, Chicago, New York, D.C., Nashville and Dallas. We're doing a six point star tour. And what's so awesome about this tour is I'm doing a different theme in each one. Yes, you will be able to do pay per view. That'll be coming out soon. Hard tickets, though, for this event to meet me in person. I have VAP where you get to meet me and hang out with me 30 minutes prior to the show in a group. I will be doing personal readings for some people that's going to be very limited at each spot. It's going to be awesome. Can't wait to meet you all in person um, or those that I've already met when I did my tour in America in 2014. Um, sending you all my best. Remember, every day I do a horoscope on futurelife.tv. Always here for you. If you want to watch your daily video horoscopes, you want to watch your weekly um, tarot, weekly intuitive. Lately, I've been writing my horoscopes. I'll do video this week but, um, for sun signs, but I'm always there for you. We've got 11 other people on there too. Some awesome astrologers, lifestyle experts, everything. I just want to say thank you. I know it's a crazy time, but really, I think when you look deep down at it, the craziness is bringing up things for you to deal with the truth of who you are, to deal with what you really want in your life. And if you're willing to have the balls or ovaries to do it, I'll see you all later and I'll leave you with that. Peace.